Hi, I'm Larry Karaszewski, and this is Trailers from Hell. Today's movie is Catch-22, uh, based on one of the defining novels of the 20th century. This movie was eagerly awaited at the time, and almost instantly forgotten and trashed by audiences and critics. But rather unfairly, I think the movie's quite good. So here's Mike Nichols and Buck Henry's take on Joseph Heller's masterpiece. Well, just look at it once, will you? Sorry, Sarah, your head is okay. Hi! Please, don't do that. This trailer is ballsy. It says, we got the goods. It's not even a trailer, really. It's just one scene played out. It says, we don't have to razzle-dazzle you. You love the book, and we're the real freaking deal. Well, it's a bit of a shame, because one thing this movie does right is the razzle-dazzle. It's one of the best-looking movies ever, shot by David Watkin, who later won the Academy Award for Out of Africa. The movie looks like unlimited money. Every shot is magic hour. Magnificent long takes. All the sets were beautifully built and then beautifully destroyed on screen. The production had, I think, the biggest private air force at the time, a completely operative World War II Army airfield, massive. And there's one shot of B-25 bombers taking off, one after the next, and it's just stunning. There's also another insane one-take master of a dialogue scene in which a plane crashes unnoticed. When you watch the film, all you think of is, holy Christ, how long did it take to reset for the second take? Mike Nichols is a genius at using these long takes. The mise-en-scene is pretty spectacular. The reason the film didn't succeed at the time is probably because the book was so influential. You probably can't have Dr. Strangelove without Catch-22, and you certainly can't have M.A.S.H. M.A.S.H. actually opened just before Catch-22 and was a huge hit. And M.A.S.H. was the scruffy, low-budget movie that felt of the moment. So when the big-budgeted Catch-22 showed up, its thunder had been stolen. And like M.A.S.H., there was also a TV series made after the film, but it flopped too. Uh, Richard Dreyfuss played Yossarian. Catch-22's reputation has grown over the years. Uh, Steven Soderbergh is a big fan. The cast is amazing. Bob Newhart, Richard Benjamin, Paula Prentice, Orson Welles, and Art Garfunkel in his film debut. Nichols loved Garfunkel, used him musically in The Graduate, and used him really well in The Great Carnal Knowledge. But the star of the show here is Alan Arkin. It's probably his definitive performance. He is Yossarian, a sane man who can't believe he's the only one who sees the insanity around him. I mean, it's actually Arkin's film persona. I mean, think The In-Laws or Freebie and the Bean. Arkin is so right for Yossarian, he's almost wrong. The character just becomes Alan Arkin. Arkin even admits it, said at the time, it was the only part he's ever worked on that didn't demand a conception because there isn't any difference between myself and Yossarian. And I want to talk a few moments about the screenwriter of the film, Buck Henry. He's a bold writer, uh, fearlessly took on some of the big adaptations of his day, Candy, The Graduate, Catch-22, and his comedies are wonderful, Get Smart, What's Up Doc. And what was also great about him was that he was a personality and a performer. He gave screenwriting at the time a face. I was growing up in the Midwest and I could turn on Saturday Night Live and point to the funniest, smartest guy in the room and say, that's a screenwriter, and that was very influential for me.